This is a video discussion on the paper, Brava and Autologous Fat Transfer is a Safe and Effective Breast Augmentation Alternative. Results of 6-year, 81 patients prospective multicenter study. This is an important paper that ultimately looks at 71 expanded patients with Brava who had the expansion pre-autologous fat transfer and attempted to show its safety. It showed, in fact, uh, only one infection out of those 71 patients. The donor sites were all described as okay, and there was a 16% incidence of fat necrosis as seen on MRI postoperatively, with most of the MRIs done at one year. In terms of the efficacy of the method, the average amount of fat injected was 277 cc's, and the calculated retention of that injection was 82 percent. This study used as a control group six published series going back over several years which included 355 women who had on average 243 C's of fat injected with a retention that was calculated at 134 cc's on average or about 55 percent. The conclusion of the study was that Brava was a safe technique, that it allowed larger volumes of fat to be injected at one sitting, and that the amount of retention was greater, showing 82% retention on average versus 55%. This is, in fact, a very important paper because the topic is so hot and so interesting to surgeons at the moment. I think it does provide additional evidence of safety in particular with only 19% of the patients showing fat necrosis on MRI and only one infection out of the 71 patients who were followed. I think it also demonstrates that the technique is evolving over the last several years. The authors have gone away from syringe harvesting of the fat to more mechanical harvesting, and this includes a 12-hole cannula versus a single hole or maybe two or three-hole cannula. The authors also have abandoned earlier efforts using uh, high-speed centrifuge and now use low-speed centrifuge techniques. For injection, instead of using small syringes, the authors now use large syringes, no longer 3 or 5 cc's, but 10, 30, or even 60 cc syringes. All in all, what the authors have done has contributed to industrializing the process faster, larger volumes, greater retention as compared to previous published techniques. The improvements that the authors have shown are probably multifactorial. They include the fact that the Brava system has been in, uh, adopted by them and even pioneered by them, but it also includes improved surgeon skill and experience, the larger cannulas, the slower centrifuging, and just more industrialization of the process. I do have a few concerns about the study that are worth mentioning. To begin with, I have some concern about the donor sites, and even though they're all described as fine in the study, I think the donor sites tend to be ignored in these patients, and as we do larger and larger volumes of liposuction for lipo fat infiltration, I think we need to remember that the donor sites need to be respected and treated like cosmetic liposuction donor sites. I also have some concerns about the control group in this paper. And although there is no ideal control group, looking at these six previously published series is kind of a mixed bag of, of techniques and measurement techniques. And in particular, the issue about how the fat retention is measured. This is not a perfect science, at least so far. And so the study patients are, are measured using one fat retention measurement technique, whereas the control series of patients are measured by a variety of different techniques and by a variety of different observers. Nevertheless, I think this is another additional piece of information about the value of autologous fat transfer, uh, the safety of the process, and the likelihood that this external expansion process uh, facilitates and augments the potential of this technique.